Hi everyone, this is Arcadius and welcome back to Naval Creed. Today we will be going over the newest rank point ship that has been added to the game. I was added about a month or so ago uh, and I have since unlocked it. That is the British battleship Jellico. Uh, you may have noticed that she seems very familiar to a King George V. Uh, that's because she's the original design that the King George V was supposed to have with three quad 14 inch gun turrets. Uh, now, this is actually a pretty fun little ship. We will get to her in a moment. However, there has been a couple updates recently, as well as a developer dialogue, and some new ships to look at. Uh, so let's just go take a look at those real quick. All right, so the first thing that we have to go over is a development blog for a new U.S. battleship. Now, you, you may look at that name, Clemenza, and we'll think, hey, that's French, and you'd actually be correct. Um... Honestly, I have no idea why they're adding the ship into the game. But, you know what? They came up with an entire story, so why not? Feel free to pause uh, the video so you can actually read this if you haven't already. Pretty much, it's just saying that... Um, A, historically, Richelieu was so badly damaged that when she got to the United States that they just decided to replace her main guns with Iowa turrets. Or Massachusetts or North Carolina, I don't know, but they look like Iowa turrets. Um, and then, yeah, so we have uh, a Richelieu with Iowa turrets, but that's really the only difference. And she's at tier eight. We can check to see if those are Iowa or turrets or not. I'm not sure actually. Um, it looks like she's going to get a United States camo as well. Interesting. Um, there's no camo right now. This ship is just in preview, but it's as it's exactly what it looks like. It's a Richelieu with two Iowa turrets, potentially. They look like Iowa turrets, at least. Um, but other than that, the rest of the ship seems pretty identical. But if I wanted a Tier 8 battleship with two triple 16 inch guns i would just go with kaliningrad because that's a really fun ship actually as long as you don't show broadside you're you're free i get a lot of good damage games with that ship um Richelieu is also really good i will give it that um so increasing the gun caliber may not be terrible but i'm not really too sure on this ship all right, this is an update from May 17th. Uh, that battleship we just talked about is available for preview. A sister ship of Shinano is available, finally. Um, it's been a hot minute since there's been a camo for uh, a Japanese tech tree carrier. I think the last, well, technical Japanese camo we got for a carrier was Kaga, and that was way back as a rank point camo a long time ago. Um, I don't, I think the last Japanese tech tree camo that came out was before I even started my YouTube channel, which was years ago. So it's nice to actually get another camo out for them. It actually looks pretty good as well. I will give it that. Uh, British destroyer Anzac is available in the shop. Increased changes or chance changes to Yamato. And, uh, for me that white Lotus is key. Increased AP damage. Um, Alanevsky has higher HE shell chance, or fire chance. And Navarino has some changes, but she's still garbage. And then Michigan did have a little bit of an issue with the camo in terms of rewards, but that has now since been fixed, thankfully. And then this week's update came out yesterday. United States Battleship Connecticut is available for preview in the tech tree. This ship looks exceedingly strong, but also exceedingly fun. So I'm curious to see how she actually plays. A British Battleship Orion is available for preview in the tech tree. Not too impressed with this one at all, especially considering it's at the same tier as Connecticut. We'll go over that in a moment. Uh, two camouflages of Shimikaze are available. Again, just like um, Shinano, it's been a long time since a Japanese camo has come out, and I always wondered why Shimakaze never had a camo. I mean, Gearing has one, Daring has one, Grozovoy has one, 
just not Shimikaze. But we finally have two. Uh, we have a black one and a green one. I really like the green one personally, so I'm going to go with that one. Uh, gearing apparently is now... You can actually get her camo. I don't know if there's a bug with that or not. Don't know. Uh, some changes to Midway. Ibuki now has uh, six, or 72 knot torpedoes from 65 knots. Ibuki used to be such a good ship with fast shell velocity and the fastest torpedoes in the game. Yes, the cruiser had the fastest torpedoes. Um, and then they just took so many things away from her that it's not even worth playing her anymore. So I'm glad to see that she's getting a little bit of love, but until, or unless I should say, not until, unless they give her those guns back, she's just not worth it. And Lexington and Saratoga have some changes, and then the two French destroyers T-47 and T-53 have increased torpedo range, which is always nice because those two ships are pretty terrible, actually. So let's head over and check out the new ships and the new camos. Alright, so first off, let's start with the camo for Shinano. I have renamed her Shirayama. Um... Like I said, it's a really, really nice looking camo. I'm not entirely sure why the Japanese decided to go with green for naval camos. There must be some reason. However, I'm not sure what that reason is. Regardless, though, I can't deny that they look pretty nice on ships. Um, especially the dark green. I really, really like the dark green. And even the aircraft get some camos, it looks like. Or at least maybe the fighters. These still look like normal. But nice new carrier camo and hopefully we'll be able to see that in game more often now let's check out the shimikaze camos this is the green one right here again looks exceedingly smooth really loving the green a lot better than the akazuki camo in my opinion um, and then we also have a black one And here's this one, though this kind of looks like a German camo to me. I'm not too big of a fan, so personally I just like the green one. I've renamed her Nigiri. Uh, that could change, but for right now it sounds pretty nice. And yeah, so nice little Shimikaze. And it kind of is a piggybacks off of the Kagero camo as well. So that's always nice. Um, what other camos do we have? I think those are the only ones, if I remember correctly. So let's look at new ships. Um, let's start with the French-American wannabe battleship, Clemenceau. Um, I already have a Clemenceau. That's my Jean Bart, so this will be a different name at some point. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah. Actually, let's take a look to see what turrets I will have. Are they the Mark 7? Yes, they are the Mark 7. North Carolina has the Mark 6. Massachusetts probably also has a Mark 6. Yes, it does. So these are indeed Iowa turrets. Does Montana also have Mark 7s? Yes, they do. Mod 1. Okay. Back to uh, Clemenceau. You still have the twin 4 inch amidships, and you still have the triple 152s astern. And you still have the same 40 millimeter bofers and everything like that. Probably some 20 mils or lickens around here. Yep, we got some right there. Um, the only difference is she has Iowa turrets. Now, I'm just really not sure why we need a ship like this in the game. Um, I will do more, in, go more in depth on her with when she's actually released. Actually, 2.3 ones around a minute is really good, isn't it? It's a lot faster than I want. Okay, so I guess she's just going to be a rapid-firing 16-inch shell spammer. Oh, she get HE and AP? Yes, she does. Let me just look at some of these things here. Uh, she will be a diamond chip, as you can see from the corner there. So you're not really losing too much. So she's not going to be a uh, prism ship. So if you want a prism ship at tier 8 with this kind of armament, then you're just going to want to go for Kaliningrad. Um, 
she may be bad on paper, especially armor thickness wise, but she's actually pretty good and I have a lot of really fun games with her. Alright, next battleship. Connecticut. Now I'm going to go to South Dakota first here, just to give you an example that we go from New Mexico to this ship, Colorado, or South Dakota, heck, okay, um, pretty standard, pretty similar to Massachusetts, except she's missing one of the twin 5 inch because of increased command um, structures and the superstructure, besides that, the ship is pretty straightforward, just your generic American battleship, no issues there, um, she does have a little bit of a citadel issue astern, but besides that, she is a really, really fun ship. I just don't play her that often. Now, Connecticut is the next step above this. Now, mind you, Connecticut is at a tier 9, and that's going to be important for later as well. Connecticut is a tier 9 that is a mix of, like, three different battleships all at the same time. So you have, I'm assuming these are Mark 6s, yep, so you have Massachusetts and North Carolina 16-inch guns. You have Massachusetts South Dakota Tower, you have North Carolina Funnels, and you have a layout similar to a Montana. And you're a 9.0. So I'm pretty sure, um, feel free to correct me if I'm incorrect, but this is the only matchmaking 9.0 battleship to have 12 16 inch guns. There are a couple 9.6 matchmaking battleships with this, like Temeraire. However, there's not any that have all 12. Actually, okay, well, four triples, yes, but Rostislav does have 12 16 inch guns. Okay, so I just kind of corrected myself. So Rostislav still has. Oh, where is she? Um, the 16 inch guns, three quad turrets. So you got the same amount of firepower, except. It's a super dreadnought, pretty much. So you're not going to get the best anything. Um, nothing. It's actually one of the worst ships if you ignore the guns. The guns are actually the mainstay of the ship. But you have that weird middle turret, which doesn't really do much anyways. But you get the same firepower in a better package with this ship. You have, a, like I said, Montana guns, pretty much. You have... Okay, secondaries, I would say. Anti-aircraft is an American battleship anti-aircraft. And if she follows in the path of South Dakota, she's going to get a speed boost. There's a lot going on here, and I'm liking all of it. I'm really, really excited for this ship to come out. I already have enough free XP saved to research pretty much everything as soon as she comes out. Very excited. Now... <laughs> Also keep in mind that Louisiana, or Ohio, is also kind of similar. It's a 9.6, but it only has 8 16-inch guns, whereas Connecticut is a 9.0 and has 12 of them. So just a little interesting there. But yeah, Connecticut, really, really excited. And this is the 9.0. It's not even the 10. I'm pretty sure the 10, if I remember correctly, is going to be in Iowa with uh, Wooster main guns as secondaries we've seen a picture of her a long long time ago don't ask me what video i showed it in but i did show it in a video um honestly though i feel like this should be a tier 10 well that just makes me more excited for what the tier 10 will actually be because i actually hope it's not the iowa that would be very upsetting and then lastly we have a british battleship orion um, that is actually pretty garbage, if you ask me. Remember, tier 9. Alright, so we get a lion hull. But we get these really, really huge 18-inch guns. Now, she only gets 6 guns. And these actually look pretty long-barreled, so let me just check their shell velocity here real quick. 762. And what does Victoria get? Okay, so the same armor piercing capabilities as K2. For me, that's Victoria or Queen Anne, however you want to say it. 
So tier nine on a line hole, which isn't necessarily bad, except the rear hole angle or turret angle is pretty terrible. And you get long fuse armor piercing and you get armor piercing. So you don't even get a high explosive. Now, at tier nine, you're going up against quite a few different battleships. However, all of them are going to be outgunning you because you only have six guns. They might be 18s, but if you want 18s, you go with, I don't know, Yamato, who has nine 18-inch guns. She's a normal tech tree ship, and you don't have to worry about actually using real money. You can grind her and get her that way. Or if you do want to get money, or spend money, then you can get Michigan and get nine 18 inch guns and increased rewards because she's a prism ship i don't know why we have this ship in the game i actually don't know what she's we don't even know what she's going to be sold for she's probably actually going to be an event ship believe it or not that's what i'm guessing because usually if you can't see what it is it's an event ship or a rank point ship. But if this is a rank point ship, then I want nothing to do with her because this just looks like a waste of time. Um, when she eventually does come out, and if I can actually get to her, then I will do a video on her. Um, but if she's a rank point ship, it's going to be a long while because I have zero interest in actually getting her. And remember, 9.0. So she can face Connecticut. So you have six 18 inch guns versus 12 16 inch guns yeah let's see how that goes all right enough rambling i've been going for quite a while now and i know what you're all here to see you're here to see jellico and yeah she's actually a pretty good ship she is king george v with the three quads we've already established that however she does have a couple interesting things about her we'll get to that in one moment Let's just take a look to see what kind of stats we have. Now we're going to start here. 71,200 health. I have that increased as always. 28% torpedo damage resistance. 13mm to 381mm armor. We have a belt of 15. And turret face... Well, it says that the belt is 381, so 15 inch. And the max is actually less than that, which is incorrect. But 15 inches of armor is pretty okay. Um, you can still citadel her, don't get me wrong, she's not invincible. But she is pretty good. Uh, da -da -da, turning circle radius, rudder movement, all that jazz. Surface detectability doesn't matter because she's a battleship. Guns, 356 millimeter guns. Now, mind you, Jellico is also a 9.0 battleship. We're getting a lot of these 9.0 battleships, which is nice. Um, so also just real quick, you can get this one, or you can get this one. So yeah, just again, not really the best. Anyways, enough shaming on Orion. Okay, um, three quads, really good. Um, she's going to be very similar to Prince of Wales. Now, if any of you have this, she's a fun ship. She's a fire starter to be right out the bat. 45.2% uh, chance setting fire. Um, if you go to Jellico, we also have that. And we have two more guns. So she can be a really, really good fire starter. At tier 9, though, you are getting some increased superstructure armors and just armor in general because you're at such a high tier you have tier 9 versus what is it tier 7 yeah prince of wales is at tier 7 so some ships may be harder to burn than others but it's still pretty dang good 22.7 kilometer range 5.5 kilometer secondaries you just have your 4.5s or 5.25s whatever they are nothing too special 28.5 knots. I believe that's a little bit faster than King George V. Um, I believe she goes 28. Nope, okay. So she goes the same speed. My mistake. And then she gets a few aircraft as well. Nothing too special. 
Anti-aircraft. It's there. I have increased the range a little bit, but she's not going to be an anti-aircraft beast at all. Uh, she does have a really ugly sister ship if you wanted to get her the sister ship as well. Um, I think they're going for like the old school transatlantic liners. I don't like it though. I do like how the lights are lit up though. Do you see that? Like the bridge lights? Let me see if it's easier to see on this side. And yeah, there we go. That's pretty neat. I do give her that. Um, however, I still personally like this camo better. All right. Let's go over consumables because she has an interesting one. Uh, just normal repair, heal, and a smoke screen. Yes, smoke screen, you would say. Um, it, believe it or not, is such a gimmicky smoke screen that it's pretty similar to Kuznetsov. Uh, you're a huge target. You will never ever fit all of your ship in your smoke screen unless you purposely try. But as long as you cover up the very center of your ship, aka the tallest point, or pretty much just the center of it, that's how I remember it, uh, you cannot be seen. So you may have a little smoke screen that the circle puff is only around this area, and you have your front and your stern hanging out, but your main tower and the tallest point of your ship is hidden, so you're actually technically hidden. So you can rush up to a battleship, make sure you're farther than two kilometers away, smoke up, and then they won't be able to see you. It's really, really funny, actually. Um, so, let's toss her into a game and show you how that works. Alright, we're about to start our battle. Let's see what we have today. Missouri, Yamato, Frege de Gros, Lion, Iowa, Jellico, Wooster, Minotaur, Wooster, Takao, and Akazuki. Okay, pretty good lineup, I should say. A lot of battleships, handful of cruisers, or citadels, I should say, and uh, one destroyer. Alright, so, like I said, she's pretty much just like a King George V. If you play her like that, you'll be fine. Uh, the ship is actually kind of similar to Temeraire. Uh, it's the elongated lion with four triple 16 inch guns. She's at 9.6 though, so she's pretty much found at tier 10. But the playstyle is pretty similar. She's pretty okay at lighting fires. Not, she doesn't nearly have as high fire starting chance though. Um, but she has a more balanced layout and larger guns. But the same kind of setup. All right, so let's see what kind of gun angle we have here. Um, trying to get all your turrets, you will definitely take a lot of pens through the nose there. And potentially even on the belt, that's not a really good angle to use all your guns. I do have health buffs and speed buffs applied, so do keep that in mind. Um, and then we're just going to head our way over here. And try and get some good shots on. So first things first, we have an Iowa. Let's send some shells down range. Get a swing on a little bit more to get that last turret out. If you've noticed, the quads are just like the British quads, not the French quads. You fire all four shots at the same time versus two and two. But we already have some good damage. And I believe I ever set for rate of fire, if I remember correctly. So I reload in like 15 and a half seconds. Let's see if I can nail this destroyer. Two fires, but only four hits out of 12. Not the best. Alright, to cow. As you can see, I already have three fires out of eight hits. And if you just keep leapfrogging targets like this, boom, two more fires, eight, what's that, 11,000 damage? And you're set, so I'm going to switch to Wooster now. And every 15 seconds, you can set a new fire. Pretty much. Well, three fires, 14,000 damage. Let's get some fires on Freddy over here. And, oh, you want to smoke me up? 
I appreciate that, but I have my own smoke screen. And I was actually about to use that. So we're actually going to see if we can use this one. There's another fire. Secondary's just got a fire because main guns can't do enough. I could have used armor piercing on this Yamo, but I just want to burn everything. Another fire, almost 9,000 damage. Iowa could still use another fire. Let's see if we can get one on the rear superstructure of Yama. Yep, there we go. Two more fires, 14,000 more damage. You, you can sense a pattern here, right? Let's see if I can get this one past the island here real quick. Well, I got the first two turrets out. And another fire. 14 fires already, by the way. So yeah, a really, really good fire starter. And if you put work into turret rotation and reload, then you're just a rapid firing HE spammer. And you let the fires do the damage for you versus your armor piercing. Two more fires because why not? Oh, we're gonna get kicked out of our smoke screen, but that's fine. We needed to move anyways. Missouri can have some fires. Oh, the first shot that actually didn't result in a fire, but that was because my aim was so bad. Let's try that again. And you know what? I think I'm in a good spot. Let's pop a smoke screen. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what, just like that, I disappear. Two more fires. And we're going to start slowing down here. Let's see, what ship needs a fire? Let's go with Freddy again. Haven't shot you in a little bit. Smoke screen deployed. Two more fires. Two secondaries destroyed. I'm also destroying a ton of anti-aircraft guns while I'm doing this. So if there was a carrier, then there'd be a lot less anti-aircraft defense on all of these ships. Alright, Lion with two more fires. And I think that means Iowa is now free of fires. Yep, so let's give her the good news. You can just see how easy it is to get high damage numbers. Three more fires. Look, Missouri's free of fires. I'm not even using armor piercing, I'm still going to have a ton of damage, you realize this. One more fire. Every single shot pretty much is going to give you a guaranteed fire, that's how good the fire chance is on this ship. Oh look, Freddy Putter's out. Well, we can fix that. Real quick. And with a smoke screen, they can't even see me. I'm still concealed. Let's see if I can get another one on Freddy. I wasn't really happy with that last salvo. There we go. Okay, now they can see me because smoke screen dissipated. But if you wait a minute, like actually 60 seconds, um, it'll come back. So you just have to survive until then. Which your battleship, you'll be able to survive. Two more fires. 30 fires so far, by the way. So, this ship definitely has her spot as an HE spammer. Um, I'm running out of different targets to light a fire, so we're just going to actually go for damage. I still got another fire. And that'll probably kill you, so let's switch back over to Freddy. Probably could get a bow fire on Freddy if I aim right for the bow. The accuracy is pretty good as well, if you noticed. Yep, another fire. Um, not too much dispersion. Honestly, it's similar mentality to an Alzus. If you can aim at the target, you're going to hit. Ooh, but I did take some big damage there. Also set another fire. But I could just... Well, I, could, I was going to smoke up and then they would lose sight of me, but there's nothing left, so it doesn't matter. So... A very quick battle. Curious to see what my fire damage is, considering I had so many of them. 
427,000 damage, two ships sunk, 172 shell hits, three aircraft shot down, 33 fires, four modules destroyed, one capped base, 23 secondary hits for over 9,000 base XP. All right. Let's see here. HE, 180,000 damage. Fires, 245,000 damage. I did more damage just by burning ships than by actually shooting them. And then secondary got a couple hits. They actually set one of the fires, though, so that was funny. The same kind of thing can go for Prince of Wales. Not only are your main guns fire starters, but your secondary seem to have a fire, or a higher chance of setting fires as well, as we saw there. Um... Yeah, that armor-piercing citadel and me right there, but it was fine. But yeah, um, absolute menace of a fire starter. Let's actually check Temeraire's fire starting. Yeah, she only has 43.2. So a little bit less, not much, but it does make just enough of a difference. And the smoke screen is just a gimmicky thing where you can just pop and disappear. So really fun, actually. Um, glad I did get this ship. She seemed really fun, and she does not disappoint. So definitely recommend her as one of the rank point ships you should be working on if you so desire. Uh, with that, I will wrap up today's video. If you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And finally, I have talked myself into it, French Destroyers. We'll be starting those videos right after this one. I also have one more... A video to do about my predictions for the Naval Creed. These will be for the uh, Gem, Prism, event, pretty much the extraneous ships that aren't in the tech tree itself. So everything on the left side, if that makes it any easier. Just my predictions for what those future ships could be. Um, I will tell you right now, this was not one of them, and neither is that one. <laughs> But we have a few, uh, actually quite a few ships to go over, so lots of videos potentially coming up in the future. We'll see what my schedule says. But for right now, thank you and have a good day.